Hey, this is Steve again. I'm bringing you another video about performance, uh, specifically gaming performance. I'm going to assume you've already watched my other video on Windows 7 performance, or Windows performance, actually. And if you haven't watched that video, uh, please watch that video, and then come back to this one, and uh, we can start from there. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure you have the most up-to-date graphics drivers for your graphics card. If you don't have a graphics card, you want to make sure you have the uh, most up-to-date chipset. A lot of times, Windows updates will do that. If you have an integrated graphics chip, it, you know, just do what you can Google search-wise to make sure you're up-to-date. Actually, usually, if you got a computer from Dell, they have an auto um, detect thing, and you know, if you know your GPU is from, uh, if you have a graphics card and you know it's from Nvidia, they a lot of times have an auto detect one, and also I, I believe ATI does also. So once you have all the up-to-date drivers. You want to go into the control panel. They should all have a control panel. If they don't, you're probably using something that shouldn't be playing games anyways. Um, go into you can adjust image settings with a preview and set it for performance, or you can just go in here and manage 3D settings and read each one and make sure you set it to the right thing. Um, vertical sync it, it necessarily off isn't necessarily the right way to go. Uh, V-sync, yeah, you always want that off, but um, you know this one is on and it actually is better performance with it on with a minimal loss to image quality so you know make sure you got prefer maximum performance and you're using all of the CUDA cores or stream processors as unknown with the or ATI and uh, and that's a good good place to start up-to-date drivers and correctly set control panel um, next thing you can do um, Besides overclocking your CPU, I, I, I am going to get into another video about overclocking, but I might just leave it with this video. We'll see. You know, CPU overclocking is a little bit different, and I don't know if I can record the BIOS or not, and, and it's assuming you have a BIOS that can even do that. So let's just go with the card. If you have any kind of aftermarket graphics card whatsoever, which most PCs will take one, you, you can find out that information later in, in the my upgrading hardware video um, but if you have any kind of aftermarket GPU and you have a control panel and you're able to mess with 3D settings pretty much 100% you're going to be able to use MSI Afterburner or they might already have their own overclocking utility um, MSI Afterburner you can just google MSI Afterburner also guru3d.com all one word um, has, has a link to it in their download section and they always have the most up-to-date. This works with NVIDIA and ATI, and it works very well. Um, like I said, I might do another video on overclocking. You can actually go into the config for this and set the EU, EU LA agreements um, so that you can get more unlocks. Like, say, possibly these um, clocks might be locked. You might not even be able to move them, or may, might not be able to set the fan speed without going in there and changing that. Um, but we're just going to assume that you can do that, and if not, you can Google it. Core voltage. Eh, don't even mess with that. Why did I do it on mine? I don't know. I really don't know. It was only plus 12. Um, that's mega, or I'm not, not even sure, plus 12 MV, I don't even know. But it's not much of an increase, and I didn't notice any difference with it at all, and I never usually do that. Um, I don't really care about this video card. It's 650. It's good. It's a good video card, but it's not the best. So, um, core clock, memory clock. Usually on most graphics cards, you're going to be able to move these sliders three quarters of the way up, or so, maybe a little under that, as as such with mine here. And uh, what you want to do, I, I'm going to go into it a little bit. You, you want to apply, you don't want it to overclock at system startup at first. You want to increase it by about 50 until you start getting almost, it, once you get to three quarters, then you want to start just upping it by very small amounts until you find the sweet spot. If you see artifacts on the screen, definitely stop and probably underclock it a, a little bit of a ways because uh, once you start a game, you probably will see even more artifacts. And that's what you want to do is run some kind of benchmark, uh, fur mark, 3D mark, um, even just a, a graphically intensive game. You know, just go in, make sure you're not seeing any artifacts, let it play for a little while, no artifacts, and uh, and also have a monitoring program to watch the temperature. This one will do it, actually. This one has a temperature on it. 
which max is 70 is what it's seen and this can go up to 90 so I'm definitely good um, voltage w upping the voltage will usually shorten the life of your graphics card but you know play with it at, at your own risk you might have a shader clock same applies for all these clocks just you know you can up it up quite a bit maybe in the, in the beginning you know a good 30 percent increase on the bars but um after that go very slowly so you don't you don't hurt anything uh, I've never had anything get hurt even from going I could pull these bars all the way to max and uh, it would just crash my computer and, I'd ha and it would reset it when I came back in so besides that let's go into the in-game settings because that's there's not much else you can do here on the desktop Global Offensive isn't that graphically intensive, but I'm going to use it just to kind of show you what the settings look like in a game. It has good settings, and most games are going to be very similar. Video settings, you know, a lot of it's preference, but resolution, you want to do whatever the resolution is on your desktop. If it doesn't work, then you might want to change things to 4.3, um, you might want to mess around and, and get a lower resolution. Lower is definitely going to give you better performance in any video game. Most of you guys that play video games that are watching this already know that, so I'm not going to go to in depth with that. But definitely lower this. Like if you want to keep um, HD, um, but you needed better FPS and you wanted widescreen and everything, you could just bump this down to um, 720p, which is 1280 by 720, and you still got 720p. Um, it'll still work. It'll still look good but it'll give you better FPS. Usually games have advanced tabs. And under the advanced tab, if you're trying to get better performance, sit, maybe try set, setting them all to normal. Um, things like multi-core render, rendering you want enabled because that's going to be using more of your CPU and that's a good thing. You want it to fully utilize your CPU. Um, shader detail is one thing that really affects video games. If you're lagging, turn it down d or even disable it. Um, a good tip is just to set everything to low and then go up from there on things that you really want. Like, okay, I really want texture detail. You know, I really want the effect detail to be up. Well, put those two up and then go into the game and see what happens. You know, and, uh, and if you can go more or less, then do it. So that's how you optimize your computer for video games. Um, if you're still not getting the FPS that you want, ask questions, Google it some. Um, if you're still not there, I'm going to be making a video on upgrading hardware, and that's what you're going to have to do. Uh, I'm going to give you, show you how to do it, and save money when you do it. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.